here are the story times of all the fucked up ways that I found out people had passed in my life, like died. So three years ago, I was on a work trip in Aspen. And normally I talk to my mom like every single day. I hadn't really heard from her or my sisters or anyone, but I like did not think that much of it. Cause like I was living my best Aspen life. One day my mom's blowing up my phone and she's like, hey, we need to talk on the phone immediately. And I'm like, I'm working, I can't talk right now. And she's blowing up my phone. She's like, we need to talk right now. And I'm like, I cannot be bothered. But whatever, I get on the phone with her and she's like, um, I need to tell you something. And I'm like, yeah, fucking clearly you've been blowing up my phone. Like, what is up? My mom's like, Liv, um, your cousin's no longer with us. That doesn't register to me whatsoever. I'm like, okay, where did he go? Because in my mind, I'm like, is she trying to tell me he's in prison or something? Like, this is kind of fucking weird. And my mom's like, he's just no longer with us. I'm like, mom, where the fuck did he go? Mind you, I'm nannying at the time. So the little girl I'm nannying is like, Livy, Livy, let's play. And I'm like, hold on, my mom's being really fucking weird. My mom goes, he's dead. And I'm like, mom, what the fuck? First of all, why did you say he's dead like that? You could have just said he passed away. So I'm like hyperventilating, freaking out. And she's like, go on a run, Liv, go on a run. I'm like, bitch, I just found out my cousin's dead and you want me to run a fucking half marathon right now? Like, relax. But I'm like, mom, like, why couldn't you wait till I come home from Aspen? Like, I'm coming home in two days. It was like, well, people started posting on social media. So we thought it'd be really messed up if you found out through Facebook. But she's like, we've all known for days. I'm like, days? She's like, yeah, go on a run. It'll make you feel better. I'm like, what the fuck, mom? So this next story needs a little bit of like a prefix. Mm, that's not the word, like a backstory. At this point in my life, I was like kind of wanted by the police for like a low key crime. I, it wasn't even like a fucking crime, but like whatever, my friends and I were dumb and we did something. It's a story for a different time. You just need to keep in mind that the police were like looking for me. So I'm in the midst of nannying once again and I get a text from my oldest sister. So my sister's like, oh my God, Livy, the police are at mom's. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, they're, they're there for me. Go to part two. So I freak out and I'm texting all my friends that I'm involved with this like petty little crime because the police had already went to their houses. I'm like, fuck you guys. Like the police are at my mom's. Like I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, this is so annoying. It's not like I was getting arrested. They just wanted to interview me for a crime they thought I committed. I'm texting my sister. I'm like, tell the police right now that like I answered their voicemail and I called them back. They just haven't got it back to me. And she's like, oh no, you're fine. The police didn't want you. They wanted mom. I'm like, what did mom do? She's like, oh no, they just needed to let her know that grandpa's dead. I'm like, Grandpa Grandpa's dead? Again, I'm at work, I'm nannying, and the little girl's like, Livy, let's play. And I'm like, hold on, give me five. I think my grandpa's dead right now. And my sister's like, yeah, grandpa died. She's like, wait, did mom not tell you? I'm like, no, mom didn't tell me. You're the one that's telling me grandpa's dead and you're doing it over text right now and I'm bawling my fucking eyes out at work. And my sister's like, oof, my bad. Yeah, he's dead. So I call my mom and I'm like, please tell me that like my sister's joking. Like, why does she keep telling me grandpa's dead? And my mom's like, Liv, <sighs> She's like, yeah, grandpa passed. We're waiting till you got off work to tell you because we didn't want to upset you at work. I'm like, well, too fucking late. Like now I already, like what? Mom's like, don't worry. I'm going to bring your sisters. We're going to come down. We'll talk to you. But yeah, he died. And I'm like, no, no, that's like beyond obvious. Can I get some fucking details of how he passed though? Like what the hell? I was so upset because I was like, who tells somebody over text that their grandpa's dead? Like it's just casual. I'm like, mom, why did she text me like that? And she's like, you know, she's not always thinking. I'm like, yeah, no, that's pretty fucking obvious. So flash forward a year, grandma's pretty sick, which was really hard because I was super close with her and I like just loved her so much. So I had just visited her. She wasn't doing great. Like she was doing pretty bad, but I like still had hope, you know? Until one morning I wake up and I look at my phone and I have a text from my mom's boyfriend. My bad, ex-boyfriend now. The text is like, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I'm like, what loss? So I call my mom and I'm like, what loss is he talking about right now? My mom was like, that fucking asshole. Like he wasn't supposed to tell you. And I'm like, can someone inform me though? And my mom's like, Liv, grandma died last night. And I'm like, what the fuck, mom? Like, yeah, I meant to tell you. Like, mom, we gotta get better at this because this is really doing the toll on my mental health. But those are the story times of how I found out people passed in like literally the worst way. 
I fell in love with a man from another country. We dated online for six months. Then he came to visit me in my country for two months. We were crazy about each other and he told me he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. He proposed marriage immediately and it felt too soon. But I loved him and I knew he was the one I wanted to be with. So I agreed to marry him. But my parents were against the marriage. They said it was too soon. But like I said, I felt he was the one for me. I loved him and I wanted to be with him. So we got married a week before he left my country. Now, the plan was for me to move from my country to his country. So I quit my job, sold my car and my apartment, packed my few belongings and moved to his country. Before I left, my mom told me to keep my money in a separate international account. And she asked me not to tell my husband about it. I never kept any secrets from my husband. And we shared everything. It was as if my mom was already seeing him like a bad guy. I refused because I wanted to start my marriage based on honesty. I didn't want to see my husband like a bad guy when he has not done anything bad to me. But my mom begged and begged. So I finally agreed to keep my money separately in an international account before I left the country. The move from my country to my husband's country went very smoothly. And my first few months with him was amazing. The only issue I had with him was that he didn't want me to work. And he never told me this before we got married. He had a good job and he could provide for us both so I didn't really care. His cousin and his mom stayed in the house next to us and they came to the house whenever they wanted. I didn't really mind because they were very nice people. One thing I noticed was he was very close to his cousin. Let's call her Sharon. My mother-in-law told me Sharon's mother died after giving birth to her so she has been taking care of Sharon since she was a child. My husband and Sharon grew up together so they were practically siblings. That is why they seemed so close. I always felt left out of conversations because I didn't understand their native language. One day, I decided to learn the language secretly and surprised my husband once I started speaking his language fluently. So I started taking courses online. My husband wanted a child immediately we got married. And personally, I wanted to wait a little. But he kept insisting, so I agreed. Four months into our marriage, I had not gotten pregnant yet. And I could see he was getting frustrated. I realized I was pregnant the fifth month after we got married. I wanted to tell him immediately about the pregnancy. Pregnancy, but I felt I should wait a little bit longer so I can give him the good news in his native language. At this point, I could understand a few of the things they said around me and none of them knew I was learning the native language. One night, my husband's cousin came to the house to visit him. I had just finished cooking and I was setting the table for my husband. Since she was there, I served her a plate of the food and we all sat around the dining table to eat. They started talking in their native language and at first, they were just talking about the constant headaches my mother-in-law was always complaining about. Then all of a sudden, his cousin asked him how long she has to wait. Then my husband replied and said he was working on it. He told her she shouldn't worry and that I'll be getting pregnant soon. And then they can finally be together. I almost choked on the food I was eating. My husband looked at me and then offered me a glass of water. I apologized in English and told them I was eating too fast. They both smiled at me and then his cousin said she cannot wait for me to get out of their lives. I acted cool but I knew at this point that something else was going on. I was already pregnant but nobody knew. I just knew I had to get out of there. At this point, I had no money on me because I was not working. But I had money in the international account and no one knew about this except my mom i sat beside them that night and pretended to read a book from the letter i heard they've been sleeping together for a very long time even his mom knew about this they wanted a child together and they've tried for years but to no avail so i was plan b he lured me from my country to his to give him a child and after i give birth i don't know what they plan on doing to me the next day i told him i was going to braid my hair i took only my passport and my phone and left everything else behind i went to the bank with drew some money, bought a ticket, and left his country that very day. I called my mom on my way home. She was waiting for me at the airport. I broke down into tears when I saw her. She saved my life and I'm happy I listened to her. My son is two years now. I've divorced my husband and my dad has threatened to lock him up if he ever steps foot in our country. Imagine what would have happened to me if I had not tried to learn his language. I don't think I would ever trust any man ever again. But right now, I'm just grateful for my life. I met Asil for telling my brother's wife that she's a stuck-up biatch. When my brother met his wife five years ago, we were all very welcoming, but it was very soon clear that she wasn't interested in being part of the family. Over the past five years, she's come to our family get together six or seven times, and it's either always my brother alone or my brother and my niece. Initially, I would try to make plans with her, but she was always rejected. And when she has attended, she's very quiet and reserved. Because of this, my brother has also stopped attending family gatherings, and my parents are just very disappointed with this. I've asked my brother about it, and he's always maintained that she's just very introverted and has social anxiety. Next week is our dad's 70th 
birthday. Of course, everyone's invited. It's a big event, and yesterday my sister-in-law said that she will not be coming to the trip. The conversation went like this. Hey, I'm sorry, but something urgent has come up, and I won't be able to attend. It's only going to be my husband. Me, at least the niece is coming, right? Oh, I would love for her to attend, but she won't attend without me. Then why don't you stop being a stuck-up biatch for once and attend the event, since it would mean the world for my dad. And then she didn't respond after that. I got a call from my brother later, and he was furious, saying I was very disrespectful. Now he's not coming until I apologize. My family's kind of split on this as well.